Hello guys, normalization is a major part, is a key part for any design of a database. And from the beginning, if you have any problem with it, then you need to redo all the work and include the developer's code. Normalization is a powerful technique for creating efficient database and it is best suited to the task they will perform. The concept using normalization comes from mathematical relational theory and sometimes definition of normal form use specialist terminology. This module describes normalization and normal form by using examples to clarify the points being made. We need to outline the benefit of normalization and some of the concepts that underpin it. This describes various levels of normal form. Here we have up to six levels. Explain the benefits of denormalization and outline some techniques for denormalization. Now, if you do believe you already understand all the concept of normalization and the previous examples, then it will be fine. You can just skip the part and access directly to denormalization just to know what is it and how you can use it. Otherwise, I prefer if you follow with us just to improve your skills even more. Let us start now with the first lesson. Fundamental of normalization. Now, so far, we understand normalization is going to help to deliver a database schema that is standardized, which ensures the data is constant with minimal redundancy. When you apply normalization guidelines to a database design, you can achieve many benefits and include database that is more constant. Let us take this example from the previous module. With this example, as you see, the data here is constant. Why? Assume that I want to put everything in one table. Of course, I will have redundancy because uh, one student might enroll to more than one course. And because of that, I need to re-edit or to re-enter the information of the user to all other fields for the courses he enrolled into. So his email as an example. I want to now mention the email for any course he might enroll. If he join 10 courses without such design, if I have one single table, then I need to mention his information in all the 10 rows where this student enrolled to the courses. Now, what if I just need to edit his email? Now with this design, you will see that his email is mentioned only one time in this table, so I immediately access to this cell and edit his email. While if I use one single table, big table, and his email is being repeated 10 times in that table because he enrolled to 10 courses, then I need to edit all the 10 times when we have his email in all these cells. So that's why the data now is more constant comparing to another design without normalization. This is one of the main benefits of normalization. Another benefit, database can be extended without having to redesign it. Again, take a look to this example. With this example, if I need now to add more information, then simply I can just add one more table and I will add the right student key to it and then link the new information to the student key. This is achievable. While if I have just one big table, all the information are in there, then I want now to redesign the main table, add a new column maybe there, and then start to feed it with information. And this is not going to be an easy process if we have a lot of data. Another benefit of normalization is easy to use database because here the data is going to be stored in a way that mirrors real world processes. Take a look to this design. In this design, it is easy to tell how many tutors do I have in this institute, how many courses I can present, how many assignments do we have, how many students. Why? Because everything being saved in such a way that we group the main entities into a single table. And also we have, of course, some transitive tables to combine all the actions relating to all these entities. But it is very easy to follow with this database. Again, imagine if you have a single database and in that single database, you need to mention everything. How you can determine how many uh, students do you have? Because maybe a single student can join to too many courses. So you have, let us say, 10,000 records. And those 10,000 records you need to search for the total number of students and then they you will find maybe they are just 1000 students while in here i have already a table for students i can immediately know how many students i have in here even if i want to run a query the query is going to search only for these records to find the number and names of students i don't need to search in one single table for all records all the time also normalization give a great hand to what we call it online transaction processing which is oltp with OLTP, as you see in here, you can create as many transaction tables as you want according to your need. So that's why it's going to give support for OLTP according to the need of the system. Another benefit of normalization is the key. And we have different kind of keys. We have 
the primary key, we have the foreign key, and we understand the, what is the benefit of each one of these. Now, simply because of that student ID, if I ask you to build a query, and that query find to me how many students do I have, all what you need to do is just to read this number with your query, which is the last value you will have it, uh, or the last key you will have in this column, and the value in this key represent the number of students I have in this database. So it has a value not only for the link or relationship between the tables, but also is going to support the queries when you want to determine a specific value. When it comes to keys, we have a primary key. We have a candidate key. Primary key uniquely identifies every row in a table. Now, just to explain this in a bit details, candidate key, it can become a primary key. When a developer tries to build his code, he's going to look to the columns, and then he's going to determine which columns determine or has only unique values. In that case, a candidate key can be converted to a primary key. This is the idea of a candidate key. That's why it is potential primary keys for a table. For surrogate keys, it is the value that you might need to create it when you cannot configure a suitable candidate key. So in that case, you will add your own surrogate key and surrogate key can be used as a primary key. Let us take an example here. Here I already have assigned ID and assigned ID is my primary key. But if I assume the assigned ID is not in there, then I might add a sign number and I can use it as a candidate key. First, I like deliberately just add it as a surrogate key and then I will see those values are not going to be repeated. So now it become a candidate key and finally I will decide to use it as a primary key. This is the idea. If you have a good design from the beginning, you won't need even to add any surrogate key. Such design is solid to the level that you directly use your primary key, even candidate key, there is no need for it. In the next video, we have to talk about other benefits like dependencies, and we need also to check the cycle of normal forms. So we will check that in the next video. Thanks for watching.